Now let's talk about caching policies. And let's go to create profile API and let's add a policy. And let's choose cache response. And let's open the full one and let's put some number in here, the number here in seconds and leave all the values to the default. And let's save our changes. Now let's go to test create profile operation to see how the caching will work in this function. Let's go to trace and search for cache. Probably we need to send another request for the cache to take place and then searching for cache as well. And as you can see here, the request has non-cacheable HTTP method because we are trying to cache a put operation which doesn't make sense and it will not happen. So let's go back to create profile operation and remove the cache lookout policy. Now let's try to put cache to the get profile operation. It has a get verb, so it should work, right? So let's add a policy, add a cache response, same as before, putting some numbers in here and leave the values to the default. Now let's go and test the get profile operation and send a test request. Let's go to trace, try to search for cache. And as you can see, probably we need to send another request. Search for cache one more time. As you can see, we don't have any record for the cache. And if you scroll down, you will see the last thing that we get is the mock response. So probably because the mock response policy took place, it override the cache policy. So let's go ahead and move the cache lookout policy to be on top of mock response. So it should be activated before the mock response is going to be called. Now let's go back and test the get profile operation one more time. And let's go to trace and search for cache. Still probably we need to send another request. Search for cache as well. As you can see here, cache lookout took place, but it didn't find anything in the cache. And the reason for this is because the mock responses are not cached. If we get back to the policy, you will see that the caching occurs in the outbound connection. And during the mock response, we don't even have an outbound connection. We return the mock response in the inbound request that comes in. So as the request comes in in here, it's going to be processed in the inbound processing and return the mock response straight away. It doesn't get through the outbound processing to give it a chance to cache the response. Now let's go ahead and remove the cache lookout from here as well and let's save our changes. Probably we need to remove this line manually and then let's save our changes. Now let's go to function apps. And let's create a new function that has a get HTTP verb. Let's get into a LinkedIn profile, go to functions, and let's add a new function. Let's select HTTP trigger, call this function get jobs, for example, and let's create the function. Let's refresh this page and go to get jobs function. Now let's go to the integration section and select HTTP request and only choose get verb to be supported for this function. And let's save our changes. And I'm going to leave the code that's in here as a default code. I don't need to do any changes to it. Now let's get back to the API management and let's go ahead and import an API. Let's select function app and let's select LinkedIn profile API and select get jobs function. And let's import this function. 
As you can see here, we have got get jobs operation in our API management and let's go ahead and test it. And it will not work. We are getting 401 unauthorized error. That's because we didn't add the managed identity policy line in the get jobs function. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to get jobs function and add the managed identity policy line. Let's save our changes and now test the get jobs function one more time. Now it's working. Now let's go back and add cache for get jobs function. And let's go ahead and add cache response. And let's open the full configuration put some numbers in here. This time I want you to enable allow private response caching and keep the downstream caching to private, cache type to be internal, and let's save our changes. Now let's go ahead and test get jobs function. And let's send another request and let's go to trace and check what happened to the cache. As you can see here, it resulted in a hit. It returned this response from the cache this time. Now, let's go back to the policy. And disable allow private response caching flag that we have specified before. Make it as false. And let's save our changes and test the get jobs function one more time. Let's send another request for the cache to take place and let's see the trace. Let's search for cache. And as you can see here, the request contains authorization header and the cache lookout policy will not take place. This is important to keep in mind when you configure the cache policy for your APIs. If your APIs contains authorization header, you have to enable allow private response caching, otherwise it will not work. Now let's get back to the get jobs function. And when we created the cache response policy, you may notice that we had this policy been added to the outbound policies of the API management. And this policy specifies how long we want to keep the data cached in the internal cache of our API. And these two policies has to go along together. So if we try to remove this policy, we will not be able to save our changes in the policy in here because to be able to read data from cache, you have to store data in cache as well. Now, let's go back to the policies and see the other types of policies. We also are able to get a certain value from cache and store value to the cache. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Let's go ahead with the store value in cache first. And yeah, this is not the right policy syntax. So probably I need to go back to the documentation and copy it from it. So let's go to store value in cache and let's copy this line. And let's put it in the outbound policies. And in here I need to specify the key that I need to look for in the cache and let's call it key. And the value, let's call it value as well and leave the duration as it is. And let's go ahead and save our changes. Now, let's go back to the policies and add a policy to be able to read from the cache, read values from the cache. And again, let's go back to the documentation and go to the get value from cache and copy this policy and put it in here. Now we will get to see how we can use policy expressions to get an access to different request headers or query string parameters. And to do so, let's go ahead and add context, for example, for request dot headers get value or default. And the header that we are going to be looking for has a name header. And the default value 
it's going to be none. And in the variable name here, let's specify context.request, for example. Now, let's go ahead and uh, save this change. Now let's go to test to get jobs operation. And let's have a look at the trace. And let's search for cache. And as you can see here, cache lookup for value has been evaluated successfully. However, it didn't find any value in the cache. This happened for two reasons, because this is our first run to run this operation, and this is the first time to be able to cache the key value. And the second reason that we haven't specified any header in our request yet. So let's go ahead and add a header with the name header, and the value of the header is the key which is that we have used to store the value in the cache. And let's send another request. Now let's search for cache. And in the request here, you can see that lookup for value has found the result in the cache. And if we go along and change the value to something that it's not in the cache, key two, for example, and let's search for cache. And as you can see here, it didn't find any data in the cache. And if we go to the outbound section, you will be able to see how the data is going to be stored in the cache and for how long. Now, let's go back to the get jobs operation and let's go to policies. And the last policy I want to show you is the remove value from cache. And again, it's the wrong syntax. I need to go back to the documentation and copy it from it. Let's search for remove value from cache and copy this line. And let's put it in here. And we need to specify the key that we want to remove from the cache. And let's specify key. And what's going to happen here is we are going to remove the key from the cache straight after we create it, which is pretty much if the key doesn't exist at all in the cache. And of course, you don't want to do this in production. I'm just trying to show you how you can use different policies in the API management. So let's go ahead and save this change. And let's test get jobs operation. Let's search for cache. As you can see here, internal cache didn't find any value because we haven't specified a header yet. So let's go ahead and put header in the name and key in the value. And let's send another request. And let's search for cache. And you will see that still didn't find any value in the cache. And the reason for this is because we have specified in our policy to remove the value from the cache straight after we create it. So it's a pretty much if it doesn't exist at all. Now let's go back to our policy and clean this up. Let's go to get jobs. And let's go to policies and clean these policies up. And let's save our changes. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.